Hey guys, welcome back to another ADSR and Massive Synth tutorial. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR toots. So today's tutorial, tutorial is on the spatial effects in Massive, the two reverbs and the dimension expander. I will cover the delay in another tutorial because that's the the two delays I think are deep enough to kind of have a whole tutorial on. So that sound I just played has uh, reverb and some sync delay on it. And we're going to cover um, just kind of how you can use some of the effects in Massive to make your sounds a little bit bigger, make them stand out in the mix a little bit more. And for today's specific tutorial on the spatial effects, the reverbs are great for thickening things up, whether it's a lead or a bass. Um, and the Dimension Spander Expander is just a great tool to kind of add some presence to a sound and make it pop out of your mix. So on this track right here, this first track, um, I have I have pretty much the same sound loaded up. I just have all the voices taken off. Um, so it's just unison. So you can, because I'm going to show you with this multimeter that is in, ma that is in uh, Logic. Um, it's on this massive track. I'm going to show you kind of what the Dimension Expander is doing to the audio. So if I hit play, you'll notice that uh, really the only audio that that's present is down the middle, and it's pretty. It's a pretty uh, mono sound, even though massive is in is uh, set to stereo and things like that. But so in a mix, if if you had a sound like that, or let's say this was a bass sound, it wasn't a uh, progression and it wasn't polyphonic, it was monophonic. Well, your bass would be conflicting with the middle of your mix, which would be where your kick and snare usually sits. So that could be a problem. So the Dimension Expander, if I, I have it activated right here, I just don't have it turned on. You see all the audio, uh, there's, there's data for the audio represented in the stereo field now, just by turning the dry from zero up to even 50%. And this, this correlation meter down here, a correlation meter is a kind of tracking phase and the alignment of phase. So you'll see if I have the dry all the way down, the phase is over near the blue, which means it's a positive phase. And as I start to turn this up, it is uh, starting to go closer towards the red. Now, generally with the type of tool like a multimeter, in a mix of a song, you don't want your whole song on like the master bus to be pushing near the red, it means you have a lot of phase issues. In electronic music, you shouldn't have too much phase issues in the first place. But you can see that this really thickens up the sound. Um, I know that's a buzzword with audio engineers and producers, but this is definitely thickening it up. And th for those of you who don't know, the Dimension Expander is kind of a copy of an effect that was in the, uh, it was, it's like, uh, it was an old Roland product, the Roland Dimension D. Uh, it's kind of a, think of it as an ex, as a spatial expander and it's using course, it's using some voices of course with some extended delay times. And I think it's also tweaking the phase a little bit. So there's two knobs. Uh, there's the dry and the wet and the size. Um, the dry and wet obviously just controls uh, how much the effect you hear. Now the size starts to enter The size to me basically kind of sounds like a, a slap delay, or you could even think of it as a um, a reverb with a good amount of uh, pre-delay on it, so it kind of creates that slap delay sound. So again, recapping, Dimension Expander is great if you have a thin lead sound or you have a bass and it's kind of you, you have it mixed towards the middle of your track or your arrangement and you need it to stand out and be thick, toss on the Dimension Expander and uh, I think you'll be pretty pretty stoked with the results. And uh, just a side note, Exifer re Records, that they uh, make a, some software things like this LFO tool. They also have, um, they also made a emulation of the Dimension Expander in Massive. Um, so I have the Dimension Expander off in Massive. And I'll turn it on.
So you'll see that if I, uh, so this thing with a little rooster right here, it says Dimension Expander. That's a third party pro, uh, plugin. And it basically does the exact same sound as the Dimension Expander in Massive. So if you want to use it with one of your other favorite synths like Silent, Spire, Rob Pappin, FM8, you can get that. I think it's free or it used to be free. Check it out, uh, Ex Exifer Records. And I, I'm pretty sure it's free. So that's a good tool to have. All right, let's 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 move on to this next track um, with the actual reverb. So there are two types of reverb in Massive. There is this reverb and small reverb. This, uh, the one that's just titled Reverb, is actually a pretty deep sounding reverb. You can do quite a bit with it. So I'm gonna run through the knob values here. I mean, the, the what the knobs do. First knob is dry wet. And you might think, why am I going over the dry wet? Because they, it does something interesting. So it almost does a low pass, kind of a filter cutoff effect. Which is important to take into consideration when you're using it with a sound such as a lead or a pluck or something that you need pretty present. So as you get a more wet signal in the reverb, it actually kind of does like a low pass, I would say a two filter equivalent, and it's pretty subtle. But the way you can make up for that is this color knob. So so now the sound should be the same as if I had the color down and the dry wet all the way down. And it's pretty close. It's it's still cutting out a, a little bit of the high frequencies that you could always boost with an EQ. But these two knobs kind of work hand in hand. Where if you're if you have like a pad sound and you want it to be a little bit, bit bit tucked in the mix, then it helps to leave this color knob down because this is boosting the highs. And anytime you boost the highs with any type of EQ or our filter application, it will kind of make it stand out of your mix a little bit. So the size is obviously controlling the algorithm for how big of a room or plate or whatever it was modeled off of and how big a size that is. One of my favorite techniques is to um, turn the color up and then turn on a macro and so turn your dry wet down and just bump that up a little bit and have the size almost all the way out. And then do you hear that really subtle tail? If you have that on a few tracks, like let's say I had a lead sound that was a combination of three massive patches, um, you can get some pretty thick results with that and it's a really subtle thing to do to your mix and it keeps the lead sound present because that's the most important thing here with like a lead or a plug sound. You don't want to put this much reverb on it. Because it gets too muddy, even if I have the size down. It, it just lost all of its clarity. So that's a good technique to use is uh, creating a macro and assigning it to the dry wet so you can control it in uh, pretty small intervals. Another thing you can do, um, which makes this reverb actually pretty powerful because you couldn't do this if you just threw on like a third party reverb plugin. What you can do is you can obviously modulate this with kind of anything you want. Uh, you can you can modulate it with the with the velocity. So if you activate the velocity sensitivity it, uh, up in your side chain here, and then you drag this into here, and maybe have the size on on some harder hits. So the, I will actually play some manual things real quick. And we can take that velocity, velocity even and put it on the dry wet. So I'm gonna hit it really light. So there's a lot that you can, you can control with uh, the macros and modulating in Massive. You can use an envelope and you can create loop points and get kind of crazy with it so you can actually get it to where um, you have a long pre-delay with uh, with when you hear the reverb tail and things like that 
And you can also use an LFO to get some creative kind of sounds for pads. You can uh, use the stepper or performer. And then, so your reverb is always in a constant state of change, which is a great tool to use with a pad sound that evolves over time. So that's basically, um, oh, the density knob. It kind of makes, obviously, as the name implies, it, it makes the reverb tail a little bit denser. Uh, it's a pretty subtle effect, so you can play around with that and see if you can get some different results with it. But the main ones you'll be using are probably color size and the dry and wet. So a small reverb uh, is actually patterned off of the same algorithm as the uh, other reverb we were just messing around with, the one that's just titled reverb. But it has a much, these knobs kind of work a little bit differently in the sense of how they affect the sound. So with the actual, the actual reverb, the main reverb, if I just turn the uh, dry wet knob up and down, you'll see it acts kind of as that low pass filter. So you'll notice that if I do that, though the volume stays the same. Check out the volume meter over here. It goes down just a hair. Whereas with the small reverb, you'll notice it goes down in volume quite a bit. So it's a pretty big change. So instead of just kind of affecting the highs and what it's letting through frequency wise, it's actually turning things down. And turning up the size or the density doesn't get your volume back, but the color does. So with the other reverb plug-in in Massive, the the dry and wet, if you just turn that all the way up, just to recap, it'll actually kind of take out some of the high frequencies and make things sit back further in the mix. And if you turn the color up, you'll get back some, not all, of those high frequencies you lost. Whereas with the dry wet on the small reverb, You get your volume back basically, and I don't hear as much of an EQ change going on or a filter frequency range change going on as I do with the other reverb. So you can hear that the difference between So if I hit stop, and I'm going to turn this down to 50% with the size all the way up. So the size is all the way up. And just to compare that to the other reverb, if I turn the dry wet about 50%, you can hear how it's just a much thicker reverb than the, the small reverb. So the size all the way out on that, it has a tail that goes on for, for a very long time. Whereas with the small reverb, Not as much, more of kind of a short, slappy reverb. Uh, the, the small reverb would work well in conjunction with the dimension expander on some bass sounds and things that you're not going to pan out wide and that you're going to have in the center of your mix that you need to have presence and oomph for in your mix. So that's a good tool to use for that. And you can use um, a, a lot of cool presets will mix, um, will blend the two because they kind of have a different sound, these two reverbs. And then you kind of get that metallic little early um, delay and early reflection sound coming from the, the small reverb mixed with the longer tail of the actual, the other reverb. You get some pretty cool results. So stay, uh, next week I'll cover some delays and uh, some chorus effects. And we'll just keep working our way through and kind of doing the same thing, talking about how, what the effects do, or what, sorry, what the effects do and how you can use them in the mix and what type of sounds they work best on. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know in, this, in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. And if you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com, head on over there and see our other tutorials. We have sound sets, just basically everything massive. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.